What's up everybody, my name is Chris and today I want to talk to you about the Track E and the microphone that it comes with. I'm going to compare this in terms of its sound to the Rode SmartLav Plus as well as comparing the recording capabilities of the 32-bit float inside of the Track E to the 32-bit float that comes out of the Zoom F6. Now, this is a comparison that I wanted to make because these are the 32-bit float devices that I have available to me, but also to see how they do compare in terms of their overall sound. How good is the Tentacle Track E in terms of its sound? How good is the microphone compared to a similarly priced microphone like the Rode SmartLav Plus? And mainly I wanted to see if a little tiny device like this can hold up to something like the Zoom F6 in its recording abilities. Now a couple of things in terms of full transparency beforehand. Tentacle Sync sent me two of the Track E as well as a set of the Sync E, which I've been using in this set. They're not sponsoring this video or the series about these devices. However, I get to keep them after I'm done making videos about them. Now one more thing before we jump in in terms of personal story. As you can see, I have my old look back, basically the nice look of the 35mm f1.8. That however is not because my camera is actually repaired. And if you want to check out that story about how, what actually happened and how I'm faring with it right now, there's a video linked in the description below. But overall, I'm still waiting for the repair. I actually have it sent to a second company to have a look at it because the first one couldn't repair my original Canon EOS R. And in the meantime, I now purchased a second EOS R and I will explain more about all that in a coming video. But for now, at least I am back in this set with this creation and I can keep making videos. But now back to the Track E, comparing these mics with the Zoom F6 and so on. First of all, throughout this video, you are going to be listening to one of the Track E's and also the microphone that comes with the Track E. I am going to use all of this in this setup. I also have the Octava MK012 running out of frame and I might show you how that sounds in comparison in between, but for the most part you are going to hear just a normalized to minus 16 LUFS signal from the Track E with the microphone that it comes with. Now, generally speaking, I wanted to make this comparison because the Zoom F6 and the Track E both feature the 32-bit floating point audio recording. And that, of course, is one of the big changes in the industry right now in terms of audio recording to be able to record 32-bit float, which gives you much more ability in terms of editing as well as in terms of loudness normalization than a normal 24-bit signal would. If you want to learn more about that, I have made a video specifically about 32-bit versus 24-bit, how it works and what it actually means and where it might be helpful and where it doesn't really make any difference whatsoever. But that video is going to be linked in the description below as well as up here. Now there are a lot of things going on in these devices and they are still vastly different. From my understanding, for example, the Zoom F6 actually features two AD converters, so analog to digital converters. And as far as I know, the Track E features one analog to digital converter. The Zoom F6 with its two AD converters provides an incredible dynamic range and that then in turn can be stored in 32-bit floating point audio and then you can do pretty much whatever with it. The dynamic range, as far as I'm aware, is way past the human hearing capabilities. So that's something that is really notable there. Then the Track E, as far as I understand it, has one analog to digital converter and that signal then is also stored in a 32-bit float, giving you much the same capabilities. But how does that actually compare to the dual AD converters of the Zoom F6 and how does it actually sound? Now, that is not the only question because the other question is also how does this lavier sound that comes in the box? 
And granted, you can of course use any kind of microphone that has a 3.5 millimeter jack at the end in this. For example, you could even use this with something like the Rode VideoMic NTG and then plug that into the Tentacle Sync Track E and that way you have a audio recording that is 32-bit float from this device here and of course you have the timecode abilities of this recorder which is just magical if you are starting to use that and I'm going to make workflow videos about that no worries there because it's just mind-blowing how much easier it actually is to sync the audio between these devices and not worry about any wireless connections or something like that. Now it's not only the Rode VideoMic NTG that you can plug in into this headphone jack, but it's also possible to just use any lavier microphone on the market. And they actually use a screw on version of the mini jack so that you can actually basically have a locking connection here. And that way the microphone doesn't come loose just in between shots or something like that. Now that is really incredible because higher end microphones tend to also feature this. However, I can't really speak about anything that is more than the Smart Lav Plus in the Lavier area because I don't usually use Lavier microphones all that much. But now with this set, I see myself going much more into it because I have the ability to sync the audio and have a 32-bit floating point high quality recording ready to go at any time for anything like interviews, even a backup recording for podcasting and such things. But now let's look how those compare in terms of a couple of different aspects. For example, noise floor, as well as just the overall sound of the microphone. In this first sample, you're going to hear the Tentacle Track E microphone, the Lavier, connected to the VXLR Plus from Rode, which is an adapter from mini jack to XLR. And I have a video about that linked in the description below. And that then connects to the Zoom F6 and is recorded in 32-bit float. The second sample will be the same microphone connected to the track E and also recording in 32-bit float. And the third sample is the Rode SmartLav Plus using an adapter from TRRS to TRS and then connecting it to yet another unit of the track E. Dig deep within yourself for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Now in this comparison, I would say they are darn close to each other, considering that the microphones are a very similar price point that was kind of to be expected. But what I did find is that the Zoom F6's recording sounds a lot fuller than the Track E recording. That at least is to my ears in that specific circumstance or test environment that I am testing in. Between the microphone kinds, however, I would say the Rode SmartLav Plus actually has a bit of a more electronic noise floor as well as sound. The Track E microphone sounds okay. Many people I have heard talk about it said that it is similar to a Sennheiser ME microphone, which I don't have to compare it against, so I can't really speak to that claim. But others also have said that the noise floor of the microphone is a little high for their liking. But then again, there are also people out there who are not going to compare this to a $500 microphone, which is a really unfair comparison, but it at least gives you a kind of point of reference. And that's something that I'm also trying to do here, comparing a $300 audio recorder that records one device and has timecode capabilities to a $600 plus audio recorder with XLR inputs and a much bigger footprint, but many of the same capabilities one could argue. Now the 32-bit float audio comparison wasn't all that I wanted to do. I also wanted to figure out if it makes a difference whether you use a gain setting on this device or the Zoom F6. So does it make a difference whether you choose the lowest gain setting, a medium gain setting, or a the highest gain setting on the device, or does that make no difference whatsoever? 
In this comparison, I actually found that when you are using the track E and you set it to the lowest gain setting and then record a 32-bit floating point audio file, bringing that back with normalization, which I'm doing in Isotopes RX-8, then I noticed that it really introduced an interesting hiss to the audio, which I didn't get when I used the other gain settings. And thus to me, the cleanest signal was actually just using the highest possible gain setting on the F6 when turned into 32-bit float mode. This is a whole different story if you are using the 24-bit mode with the limiter, then it actually makes much more sense to set your gain correctly so that the limiter does not engage all throughout. But that's a comparison that we are also going to be doing later in this video. But here's a quick sample of the three gain settings compared to each other with the track E and of course also with the Zoom F6. Dig deep within yourself for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. And last but not least, I wanted to do a comparison between the 24-bit mode with the limiter engaged, which is automatically engaged when you change into 24-bit mode on the track E, and of course the 24-bit mode with the advanced limiter set to minus 1 dBFS on the Zoom F6. What I found there is that the audio signal is much more comparable between these two devices, so that was kind of interesting. Another interesting thing that I found is that it doesn't sound as electronic when you bring up the gain for that signal, comparing it to the 32-bit float mode. So apparently there may actually be good use cases for the 24-bit mode with the limiter engaged if you have more of a knowledge about how the audio will behave in comparison to just going with 32-bit whatever setting you go. It's not that there is no noise whatsoever in 24-bit mode, it just seems to be a little less prominent in comparison to the 32-bit version. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Now something that really differentiates this device as well as the Zoom F6 from past devices in 24-bit mode is that they have a limiter that engages after a high-quality analog to digital converter, which in turn actually already gives you a nice and high dynamic range signal. Comparing that to something like the Zoom H5, which I have also used in the past on this channel and I am also using in basically these setups for podcasts and such things, I made a comparison there with the limiter engaged, not engaged, or in post-processing using there a limiter. However, what I found was that basically you have a clipped signal and then you have a limiter that engages after that. So you have an even more destroyed signal of some sorts because you can't really use all the information that is available to you. Now, with the Track E as well as the Zoom F6, the conversion is so high quality, so dynamic in range, that you actually can limit the signal without adding distortion, and that's something that you can hear in the following sample. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. And what you hear there is that, yes, for some parts, the microphone might have overloaded, and especially with the blowing of my voice into these microphones, that wasn't necessarily ideal. However, what I want to point out here is that you don't hear crackling or a completely crushed signal like you would 
in the comparison to, for example, the Zoom H5. And I will have an audio sample of a clipped and completely crushed signal from the H5 inserted right here. Which is recording on channel 1 and 2. Channel 1 has no limiter engaged whatsoever. Channel 2 has the limiter set to general. And if you want to hear a negative example of a limiter that is just not really doing any job whatsoever, I encourage you to check out the video that I made about the Zoom H5 and the limiter there, whether or not it makes sense to use that. Also linked in the description as well as up here. So with that said, I would say the 24-bit with limiter is very usable on the Track E and of course on the Zoom F6 as well. Now that may actually make a lot of sense for you if you are using in a 24-bit workflow and you are used to that. And also if you have the ability to monitor the signal well enough and also know that the speaker will not change all that much throughout the talking. The 32-bit float make more sense if you have more of that dynamic range that you want to capture in terms of being able to pull up very silent segments and also pull down very loud segments. That's something where I would definitely choose the 32-bit float over the 24-bit. Now the 24-bit is great for, I would say, interview style things where you can kind of expect the same volume throughout. And you then also don't really have to do as much in post-processing. Personally, I think that I'm going to more often choose the 32-bit float version because then I can just use a normalization algorithm and program to just give me a nice signal that way. Later on, I can of course also add a limiter to that and just work with that audio for an interview or similar situation like the video that I'm creating right now. Also recorded in 32-bit float mode and then normalized to minus 16 LUFS. Now in conclusion, I can say that all of these pieces of equipment are things that I would continue using and I will continue using. They are really tremendous for the workflow that I am building here and also with which I am creating these types of videos. It's really magical to have the ability to edit with 32-bit float, having that flexibility in post-processing to just bring up the gain a little more and add little to no noise whatsoever to that signal is just game changer. Also working with a little tiny recorder like this, not worrying about the wireless connections, transmission signal problems and such kind of things and just hitting record once and just letting it run that way Way is just a game changer. It really is a breeze to work with and I continue to love this little device and I will continue also working with it in the coming months. Especially once Corona and the whole situation will change a little more because then there will be many more projects that I have planned that also will involve going on location and using these much more. I will have another video that is also specifically about the Track E which will continue to talk about the solution that I used when I was using my phone as my main camera with this because there's actually an app that can use the timecode signal that this sends out via Bluetooth and synchronize audio and video that way and also not worry about your wireless connection and don't have any bulky extension cords or gear that you have to connect to your camera or your phone in that case. So that's also going to be coming out in the coming days. Now, with all that said, I hope this video was helpful for you and if it was, please give it a thumbs up so that other people may find this information as well. If you have any questions about the Track E or the Zoom F6 or anything that I talked about in this video, please leave those in the comment section down below and I will try to answer you there or make a video specifically about what you asked. And of course, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of my upcoming videos and I'm looking forward to see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao!